think back to before you were born, if that's possible, 20 years ago, hardly anybody had a cell phone. 15 years ago, some of you were already born, um, cell phones were more available, more ubiquitous. 10 years ago, cell phones started being used by the majority of at least North American European populations and also being used in what we call the developing world. In the last five, ten years, they have become so completely ubiquitous, I'm sure none of you can even imagine a world without being constantly connected. It's become a part of your everyday reality, the way you relate to the rest of the world, the people you love, the people you hate, everybody around you. What is really interesting is you are now at a point where connectivity is part of your everyday life, and you're actually at the edge of a new revolution, where from the cell phone, digital technologies, together with all kinds of sensors and actuators and apps and software, are moving from your devices onto your body. So I'm going to talk to you about the fact that wearable technologies are your future. You are poised at the edge of this really, really exciting and really scary technology revolution. What are wearables right now? Most of them are these pieces that you see listed on this slide, belts, a lot of wrist-worn devices, watches, some head-mounted stuff. A lot of them are still aimed at what we call the early adopter. Uh, so basically, a demographic of mostly males still. It's not a coincidence. I chose a photo of a male athlete. Mostly male, you know, go-getters of, uh, who want to achieve a better performance, understand their body. They wear devices such as the Nike Fuel Band that track their steps, their movements, their sleep patterns. Uh, these devices are being developed not just by sports companies, also by uh, digital computer companies. This is a Microsoft product, or even totally new startups that want to give you a better, deeper understanding of what is happening inside your body and how we can then leverage this biometric information to live a healthier, happier life. Not just devices that track your biometrics, products such as the Apple Watch that was released this year actually are now creating these connections between just biometric wearables and what you guys think of your, as your everyday reality, right? All of the apps that you use uh, and all of the digital experiences that you have every day. Moving beyond these kinds of devices, there's actually products that exist right now that aren't perhaps as sexy or desirable that move off your wrist to the rest of your body. So for instance, there's a strap that can track your heart rate and help you train better. Other companies such as the Misfit Shine produce these little clips that can go all over your body. They also track your movement, your daily steps, how you sleep, help you train better, help you live better, help you achieve a more balanced life. What's really exciting is moving past devices such as these clips and belts and even glasses, there is actually really cool products being developed right now that move onto the rest of your body. So, for example, this Polo, uh, Polo Tech shirt by Ralph Lauren has all of that same biometric functionality. So, basically, it allows you to track a full heart signal, so not just your pulse, but a full heart signal, the same way that your doctor would, your breathing, uh, not just how fast you're breathing, but also how you inhale and exhale, as well as your movement and correlate all of that information using very complex algorithms in order to tell you when you can push yourself more, how you're training, help you train better, faster, to achieve the most that you potentially can. This is a really cool thing because 
it's actually a product that aims to replace all of these things that we already wear. So instead of having to wear an additional kind of strap or glasses or belts or whatever, we see this technology being integrated into all of the clothes that are in your closet. And using different kinds of apps, different kinds of algorithms, allow you to understand your body better, to know how to push yourself to the limit in a healthy and productive way. So you see these are different screens from the app that track your heart, your breathing, your performance, etc. This product was actually developed by a Montreal company called OmSignal, where, and I've been involved with this company for the last three and a half years, developing the smart textile side of things. And this is actually a part of this revolution that I mentioned to you. Because instead of just designing consumer electronics products, we're moving the technology, the sensors, and the actual engineering into the textiles themselves. So the textiles become smart insofar as the biometric sensing, so all of the different sensors that track your breathing, your heart rate, your movement, your stress, are in the textile itself. This is really amazing because we can leverage, we can use existing technologies. This is a picture of a commercial industrial circular knitting machine that's used to make a lot of the shirts that you might be wearing, pantyhose, etc. And by using these existing machines, but integrating new kinds of yarns, so conductive silver yarns, different kinds of high-tech threads, we can actually knit circuits directly into our clothes, directly into our garments. In order to actually produce this, you know, we need expertise from different kinds of scientists and designers. Because this shirt is not just a circuit board. It also does a really a lot of cool shirt things. So it fits really well. It has antimicrobial properties, so you don't smell bad when you're exercising. The way that it fits on your body helps you actually with your posture, with your breathing, with your general health. And in order to develop this, we need experts from all kinds of different disciplines. So we need experts in threads, experts in textiles, experts in fashion design, electrical engineering, computer science, algorithms, medicine, etc. You get the picture. When I was your age, I already knew I wanted to be both an artist and an engineer. And in fact, when I started my educational <laughs> career at the university, I couldn't choose. So I started with a degree in mathematics at McGill, and I was learning programming. And I thought, OK, this is cool, but it's not enough. So I actually dropped out in my second year and started a design degree at Concordia. And I did one semester, and I was learning really cool things. But again, I felt, OK, that's not enough. So I went back to McGill, and I finished both of them at the same time. So I graduated with a degree in math and a degree in design concurrently. Then I did a whole bunch of other things. I moved to Australia. I worked in research at the university. I went to grad school at the MIT Media Lab. And thinking about how to use my joint education in design and in math and computers, I ended up working in what's called wearable technologies. So eventually, I came back to Montreal, and I work in research. And I also teach in the computation arts department. And what we've done in the last 15 years is actually create a degree that would allow you guys to do what I had to do in two universities, but to do it in one. And in fact, there's more and more of these kinds of degrees popping up all over the place. So a lot of you might be already thinking about CEGEP University, and you're thinking, oh my god, why do I have to choose? Why can't I do a bit of art and a bit of science, or a bit of design and a bit of engineering? Well, you actually are an extremely lucky generation insofar as you can. There's all kinds of degrees and career options out there that will allow you to be creative in these very 
artistic, designerly kinds of ways, while at the same time working with cutting-edge technology and emerging materials, materials that change shape, that change color, paper that has sensors embedded in it. And this is really the future of the physicality of the world that you will live in. So in the research lab that I run, that is what I do. We develop new kinds of materials using knowledge from chemistry, from material science. So actually changing the very fibers that will be in our fabrics in five years, in 10 years. Developing new ways of using existing manufacturing, but with the new materials in order to make these future devices possible. So I promised you at the beginning that I would talk about truly transformative experiences in the title of my talk. When you look at all of these devices that exist right now, they might not feel fundamentally transformative. So the challenge is really in your camp. The ball is in your camp. The challenge is on your shoulders, guys, to actually reinvent the future of technology through wearables. How can you make it more diverse? And here are a few very quick ideas. What about working with the whole body, not just the wrist, not just athletes, looking at a totally different range of needs? Pregnancy, can you do something with elbows? Looking at people who are not tech natives, how can you work with demographics that aren't exactly like yourself, but not in a medical sense? How to do fun things for older people? maybe even other species. Huge food crisis looming in the world, right? There's many different solutions you guys can bring to the future of agriculture, future of food, through wearable devices. And even bigger issues and needs, refugee populations, all kinds of crises around the world that could perhaps be resolved or at least bettered through wearable technologies. We have to always keep in mind what happens before and after the technologies that we develop. Learning from craft and tradition, not just from our own culture, from cultures all over the world. And thinking about what happens to these devices after we throw them out. Because recycling doesn't mean they magically go away. It means they get shipped elsewhere in the world for being disassembled and reused by others. And finally, I just want to leave you with this idea of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. We have many different needs around food, shelter, comfort, security, but we also have a lot of emotional needs around uh, how we relate to one another and how we want to create a better world. The challenge is on your shoulders to use these new technologies that are increasingly moving onto our bodies to create a better future for all of us. Thank you.